All right, it's time now for our second look at the day's papers, and we're going to start again right here in France, where there's been a diplomatic uproar over comments made by China's ambassador in France. Our press reviewer, Leo McGuinn, is here for more. Leo, tell us what this is all about then. Yeah, this comes all comes from, as you say, Aaron, comments made by China's ambassador in France, Lu Shaya. He was taking, undertaking an interview. He was asked about Crimea, and he basically said that he doesn't recognize the sovereignty of ex-Soviet states. And the wider implications of that are he's justifying the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, this leads to this Wall Street Journal piece that says that this embarrasses Macron. China have embarrassed Macron on a European stage. They say Emmanuel Macron, President Macron, is trying so hard to balance a relationship with China and a relationship with the US, and he's failing at the moment. It all comes from Macron's recent trip to Beijing, where he met with Xi Jinping and he asked, he called on Xi Jinping to mediate things between Russia and China. Uh, also, his comments on Taiwan, this piece says, what else did Macron possibly expect? According to the Wall Street Journal, uh, China spotted weakness and they've exploited it to embarrass Macron on a European, on a global stage. As you can imagine, the reaction from the Baltic states has been one of anger. This is from Politico. They report that Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, they've all come out and called for an ex official explanation on the matter. Latvia called the comments completely unacceptable, whereas Estonia's foreign minister said they're a misinterpretation of history. There's also been an angry reaction from Kiev, one of President Zelensky's advisers. He's accused Lushaya of parroting Russian propaganda. And it's not just the Baltic states who've re reacted strongly to the matter. You can see in this piece in Le Monde, 80 lawmakers from around Europe have called on, um, on France's foreign minister, Catherine Colonna, to declare Lushaya as a person non grata. They note that at a time where war is raging in Europe, it's vital for a democratic world to send a really strong message on this. All right, Leo, we'll stay on the topic of Emmanuel Macron then, because it's been exactly one year to the day since he was re-elected for his second and final term as president. Uh, what do the French papers have to say about that? Well, Aaron, as we well know, it's been a, a tough few months for the French president. He's taken the opportunity to celebrate his one-year anniversary by answering questions from the readers in Aujourd'hui en France and in Le Parisien. His approval rating has never been as low as it is today. Much of this, of course, comes through him pushing through those unpopular pension reforms, raising the age, retirement age from 62 to 64 without a vote, of course. Throughout this interview, he talks about many things from inflation to health via immigration and obviously the very unpopular pension reforms. Macron's unsurprisingly insistent that the reforms are a good idea. But one thing, one really interesting thing from this, he does come out and say he regrets. He regrets not defending his reforms more publicly. And he says that Elizabeth Bourne, his prime minister, took too much of the flak and that's something he regrets. If we look at L'Opinion, they reflect on one year on since his re-election. They call Macron the inflexible president. We can see this cartoon of Macron in a tank just running through walls. Elizabeth Bourne, his prime minister, in the sidecar there, she says, she's saying there's other roads, there's other ways we can go. But Macron says, no, this is my map. We're going this way, determined to take this route no matter what. We'll cross the channel now to the United Kingdom then, Leo, where there is a race row involving one of the Labour Party's best known ministers. Tell us more. Yes, yeah, so this all surrounds Diane Abbott, who was the Labour Party whip until very recently. She's front and centre of many of the UK papers this morning. This is The Independent. Diane Abbott stripped of Labour whip in fresh anti-Semitism row in the party. Uh, the Telegraph have a very similar headline. They have Diane Abbott front and centre as well. If we look at The Times, they're very, very keen to point out that she was a Corbyn ally. All this surrounds a piece that she wrote, a letter that she wrote in The Observer this weekend, where she suggests that Jewish people, amongst other minority groups, haven't experienced true racism. Instead, they face a prejudice similar to that that those who have red hair, for example, face. She's since apologised, but as you can imagine, there's been a huge backlash to this. This piece in The Times expresses kind of disbelief that Diane Abbott has shown such ignorance. As a woman who's faced so much prejudice herself and racism herself, they can't believe that she said something like this. Uh, this is, of course, not the first time that the Labour Party has been, has been embroiled in an anti-Semitism scandal, which this Times piece says makes the whole thing even more astonishing. Of course, former leader Jeremy Corbyn was suspended from the party in 2020 for his supposed failure to take action on anti-Semitism within the party. 
We'll change gears now, Leo. One newspaper is discussing some potential unforeseen problems if, when it comes to space tourism. Well, last week we talked a lot about SpaceX. Now we're talking about space sex. I'm sorry for that pun, I just had to do it. This is in the Times this morning. Uh, they underline the challenges that face space tourism going forward as space tourism becomes bigger and bigger. They say couples who want to join the 100 mile club will face some problems because it's not something that people have talked about but it is a real issue, especially when it comes to reproduction because the, the impact that microgravity and increased radiations levels have in space no one knows. It's not been done before. According to one expert, the solution is rather low tech. It's not quite like in the movies. He believes couples will have to sign a waiver, basically saying that they won't conceive children in space. The piece also highlights the lasting after effects that could be in place. Radiation could, uh, could last in a male up to 74 days after their return from space. Uh, scientists say there's no solution as of yet because it's just not been talked about. Uh, but they all agree on one thing, that space sex would be an out of this world experience. <laughs> that, I'm sure it would be Leo McGuinn with the rest of you. Thank you very much. All right, it's time now for us to take a quick break here on Live from Paris, but do stick around if you can. I'll be back in just a few minutes with another look at the day's top stories.